Welcome back class to Biology 101 with the American Bi Guy, a channel on Bi TV brought to you by us. We're here every Friday night laying the foundations of bisexuality and curiously poking around with some of the questions you submitted on askabiguy.com and askatomboy.com. Now, I am your host, the American Bi Guy, just your friendly American bystander for the bi community. And I send a very warm welcome to all of you bisexual teammates out there on the bi team, whether you are sitting on the sidelines or out there playing the field as players, baby. I also welcome all you straight folks in the audience who are side kicking it with us tonight and also all of the gay community who are especially out there living their best lives and teaching us all how to do it. Now, before I begin any session, I always like to play on the field of reflection, where we take a moment to appreciate how beautiful you are, how wonderful you are, and how awesome the world is with you flourishing in it. Now, remember folks, no matter what team you may represent, remember we are all children of planet Earth. and We all enjoy the sport of being who we really are. Now, class is in session, and today I wanna to talk about how to be the captain of your team. Also, I want to talk about the dichotomy between men versus women and being open with your identity. Move a little bit along with sharing some stories of my own and also uh, kind of like how to spot a bi guy, or, which there really isn't a, you know, formula, but there are guidelines that you can kind of go by if you are curious on like, what does it look like? And, you know, making sure, okay, I'm pretty sure I'm not crazy, but there's something, you know, afoot here. Um, and so what I'll do is kind of like, you know, ended with telling you guys on, you know, how to elevate, right? How to vibrate higher. So let's dig into it, right? All right. So first thing I want to say is that we know that women don't have an issue for America, for the most part, expressing that they have a same-sex interest, right? You know, we've heard it before, Lady Gaga, Britney Spears, Madonna, um, you know, Katy Perry, they all kissed a girl and liked it, right, at one point or another. And then they turned around and pretty much married men, right? Um, which is nothing wrong with that, but they made their millions off of it. And on the flip side, men still struggle with this idea of, like, our identity, you know, masculinity, how do we go about it, what does it look like if you have a same-sex attraction or any interest and so that's what my goal is, is to be a guardian and really share with you guys some of my stories and also some of the things that I've learned from the thousands of people that I've met in talking about bisexuality um I think that uh, there's always going to be curiosity no matter how old you are you could be you know like 18 and you could be like I don't know like 51 right you know just like okay I've always had this interest and so I think that you know, as men, we really got to come to understand that just because you are attracted to another man of the same sex, right? Doesn't mean you want to jump into bed with him. Maybe you're attracted to his clothes, his style, his swagger. I don't know. And sometimes it does build up on that. But just because you are does not mean that you're any less of a man. Newsflash. There are a lot of women out there who are very okay with their men man being bisexual i just saw something on instagram the other day where some guy was getting married and you know right before his marriage it came out a tape of him being with another man and somebody who shared it thought they were going to ruin the marriage and was like yeah i know i'd rather be honest about it than sitting up here you know hiding it there are a lot of women when i like a woman and you yeah <laughs> i'll get nervous i will get nervous i'll knock stuff over like i'm every typical guy you know it doesn't happen often where i meet a woman who i legitimately makes a, it makes a team you know where i'm like i really like this girl um to pursue something more but when it happens, it happens. And I'm very open. Like I said, my life is on display here as the American bi guy. You know, and I don't know, I'm bisexual. I want to get to know you. You know, cool. And I think that's a great door opener for having a discussion on what it might look like, right? If you were to pursue a relationship or even just general curiosity. Because everybody's bi formula is different. So do not be, um, you know, stared away from being open with who you are. Uh, because it's better to be open with who you are and figure it out together rather than hiding who you are. Because that's going to be a lifelong sentence that you're going to carry. It's not going to go way you know your body cycle is going to go off which is that period when you have the same sex interest and who knows how often that might be and depending sometimes you know how long you try to ignore it, it does snowball i've seen it and usually we see that when men come out right at 50 or something saying oh yeah you know i'm gay after they've had kids and grandkids and they're married for 30 years so I do think like being honest is key because here in <laughs> Rocky Mountain, Colorado, baby, uh, there are a lot of people who are very open about their identity here. I will be honest with you. Um, 
here in Colorado with a lot of sex clubs. <laughs> a lot of, and they call it, forgive me, they call it the lifestyle. And these people are all, honestly, pretty interesting, you know? Like they're married and maybe, or maybe they're in a relationship and, you know, they, they pursue things together and they draw the line. So I've been to some places and there are some places where I have not been, honestly. Uh, I haven't been to a lot of them here uh, because I just, I've done enough uh, research. Like I used to go to some places across the country. I lived in like 10 states, you know, and just talk to people and, you know, poke at their mind and try to figure out what, you know, what brings them there, how do they identify. And so I have a number of stories that, you know, I share with you or will share with you um, in order to help you think about yourself. I don't ever reveal anybody's identity. Confidentiality is always key, but I want you guys to understand that you're not alone in this men um especially black men because we really don't have an outlet to really express it the world looks at a certain way mask it and whatnot our own community does and we're just trapped so um be open with who you are because i think that when you are you know you never know what that might lead to so i think that's a great you know point there where like i said before people are really open to you know dating bisexual people especially men um you know, you know, and, and we all get that curiosity, like I said before, no matter how old or how young you are, you are curious sometimes if you are, you know, on the, the bi team. So being open might actually lead you guys to figuring out what that might look like together and just, you know, I don't know, exploring things together or you have your rules. What goes on between you and your relationship is y'all business, okay? That ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. How you choose to go about it. And I think that's really important. Like, for instance, today I was running and I don't know what you guys know, but as I know, your boy loves to work out. <laughs> and the gym is a bi man's playground. But when it's a beautiful day, I love to work and run out outside, work out outside. And so I'm running, doing my thing. And when I run, I actually like to find benches, uh, bicycle rides, anything I can to do push-ups, lunges, you know, fire hydrant do my thing so I, I'm wrapping up my run and I come across a set of bicycle rats you know racks and people are like oh look at that guy over there doing his thing I'm like, oh, living my best life having a good time and then this guy just comes over and I'm gonna I'm be honest with you he made the team the dude was <laughs> he was a good looking dude and I was like oh okay cool um you know he was a black guy you know very you know good build he just came over and joined me and then we started to talk and all this happened within a span of like 15 minutes where he started to share with me you know a little bit about his relationship and he's dating a woman and he was like yeah she's fine she's hot but i don't know because i don't really think monogamy is where i want to be right now i've told him i gave some advice i said well talk to her about it you know because you never know what she's open to you know maybe she likes a little bit of cranberry sauce on the side right and anybody know you know because the cranberries always say the same sex attraction because a lot of people don't always eat cranberry sauce all year long and as a bi person, you don't always have the same sex attraction, right? To the degree that you want it, go and get it. But anyway, I gave him the advice. It worked out, you know, and he was like, you know what, man? I think I'm going to talk to her about it, you know, just kind of like, because he's like, I'm not a cheater. And I was like, yeah, you know, you, you have a conscience and good, you're not a cheater. But talk to her. He was like, it's a great idea. Like I said, in Colorado, people are very open-minded, and we have a lot of people who are in the lifestyle. Um, they're pretty active, too. I think I got invited to, like, a Halloween party next month, <laughs> and I'm still debating whether I want to go. Uh, I have my reservations on why, I, if I, you know, want to be there or not. I do think those environments are very interesting because you can spark up some amazing conversations with people, and it certainly will give you the um, courage to, you know, understand that you're not alone in this and to maybe pursue something in your own relationship um you know not just not there maybe but like you know just kind of see wow how do you go about it um so don't be afraid men because like i said before we're all curious i think college is a time where a lot of people are curious about everything right like i remember when i got a college, i went to four universities i lived all across the country i had over a hundred college roommates I talk to a lot of people, uh, yeah, several degrees, but you know, student debt is there too. But I will say that during that time, a lot of times, you know, this is rumor or this idea that college is experimental phase. And I've never been seeing like a couple, like I think Bishop T.D. Drake said something about it one time and people say, oh, they go to college and they face every demon in the world. And I'm like, oh, let's just out here meeting people that were probably outside their circle that they were raised in. And they might find something that they're like, wow, I, I like jello, right? Um, so I do think that that is also a very delicate time, too, for people to try to understand their sexuality as they're growing. Their bodies are still growing. You know, men, we're growing to like 25 or puberty. Um, and then there's kind of like this this thing right where like if you want to try something it's like this is a time that maybe i'll try i was talking to a guy the other day i had lunch with you know who identified as straight he was like yeah man i'm a teammate you know and he's like yeah in college you know blah blah blah, blah it's happening so um i do think that 
one out of every guy talks about his same sex attraction in college. Um, it happens all the time. I remember in undergrad, there was a guy who, you know, would text me, you know, he was from this dude, this was back when I was like, okay, I, I'm not quite sure, I didn't understand my role in this, uh, but I knew I had a same sex attraction. And this dude was like, I think he was like the campus, like, uh, <laughs> Make this guy right <laughs> and like you know we would have, we'd had a couple of classes together and i had a serious crush on this dude and i'm like whoa like we you know, were texting each other every night at two in the morning you know making laughs and whatnot and then um but when we we're in public it got very like like <clears throat> yo i'm a macho man you know and i remember one time he invited me over his room to uh study <laughs> And that was like, it was like an 80s movie with like, you know, two people in the room who were, you know, like, liked each other, but they're like trying to pretend that, you know, like, they they don't like each other or there isn't chemistry there, you know, and I remember at one point, like, we we're reading something and then, like, we both kind of looked at each other and we just was, like, staring at each other, you know. Till this day, he is, um married to a woman who I met because he contacted me almost like 10 years later and you know came to Denver and we had a good time I met his wife but I could still see that honestly he still had that spark there right and I honestly was like it's not there <laughs> it's a change but it never goes away you know and his wife had said oh you're a very good looking guy blah blah and I'm like yeah you guys look good too but uh, I'm not interested Make a long story short, like I said before, I don't think that his wife knows, but it doesn't go anywhere when you do have the same sex attraction. And it's really going to be your responsibility to either open up about that or hide it the rest of your life because that is a life sentence, folks. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, you know, and so the other thing I want to talk about, you know, from that is that it, your bicycle, right? And there's an episode a while ago that I posted, like, I think like a year and a half ago about the bicycle. The bicycle is how often does your same sex attraction really get to you to the point where you feel convicted to, you know, like, I don't know, like masturbate or go online or talk to somebody, what have you, you know, find somebody. Um, you can meet someone who's very attractive. No, I'm going to tell you guys too, and this is, this is to anybody, gay, straight, bi, whatever. The gym is key. A lot of people work out, right? And a lot of people work out to look good naked. And then a lot of people work out because they love the attention. Go to the gym. Go, go, go to the gym. I cannot stress that enough. If I'm going to do recruiting season, baby, <laughs> it's going to be in the gym. Um, because I'm going to find somebody, even though I'm not attracted to muscles, I do like the idea of us having it in common. And it's a good place where everyone's honestly showing off, <laughs> showing off what they got, you know, pretending that you're not doing it right. I mean, yours truly is also guilty of doing that when I'm all swelled up doing my thing, you know, my little stringer tee on. I pretend like, you know, I don't know what's going on. Uh, but yeah, so go to the gym. And when you, you know, like when you're good looking, a lot of times you do get a lot of people coming at you of both sexes. It can be male. It can be female, you know, um, and oftentimes I do talk to a lot of guys who I guess consider pretty boys. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you've been hurt on black guy before, right? And they're like, yeah, I have. Like, sure. I'm like, hell yeah. Like, way, way too often. I'm like, okay, well, you're a good looking person. Um, not saying that makes you bisexual, but I do think that people who are very attractive, be it, you know, can attest to, like, oh, yeah, I've been hit on by the same sex. And sometimes they just kind of leave it at that. I think a lot of men, they leave it on the astral plane where they're like, mm, I'm kind of curious, but I'm not going to do anything, right? For whatever reason. And this course, they're right. But I I do think that um you know with the bi community we love subtlety so you know if you are flirting with someone of the same sex and you know you identify as gay or bisexual just understand that they might be really entertaining just a conversation um and we and they like the conversation may be all that it goes they might laugh ego trip as my mom always say you know and go about the way but understand they're not gonna move beyond that point as far as like spotting a bi guy they'll do things stringer tank tops <laughs> showing up their body tight short shorts in the gym um pretending that you know they're not packing all that they got going on in the back or in the front into some tight little shorts or you know and then going to the gym and walking around and like look at me you know but they'll do things to, to get your attention so if you are you find yourself in you know like um, enamored or captivated by the appeal of somebody who seems to be like you know just being a little too extra you know with uh maybe they were hiking their shorts up in the gym all the way to where it's like you know by their pelvic region you just or maybe some guys even walk out in just like underwear and i'm like those are compression shorts dude you're supposed to have something over that 
they're going down the road. They they know what they're doing. You know, they know they're going to have someone, you know, attracted to them. And it could be of the same sex. I mean, women, you know, there's a whole different spiel, spiel on that because, you know, girls do check each other out too. Not always because they want to jump into bed with them, but it's really, really competitive. Um, <clears throat> so just notice what people are wearing sometimes. And I remember around like 2007 when I noticed that there was like this whole, I'm not trying to feel my age, but there was like this period where like I started noticing men who identified as straight started wearing things that were typically kind of like worn by the gay community. It just kind of like shifted in fashion. And I was like, well, damn, now I can't really figure out who's who, right? <laughs> um, but I do think that subtlety is key. And I do think that if you're looking to find you know, a bi guy. I remember like vampires and werewolves. We, you, you, you can, sometimes you can't tell. There's subtle things that we will do, right? We will do subtle things to just kind of let you know, like, I'm open-minded, you know? Um, I'm not going to narrow it down completely, but I do, what I've seen is sometimes um, guys are a little more open will do things like, you know, like put like a jewel in their face or maybe like they get like some piercings going on and then, you know, like, year with it i'm not saying that makes you bisexual but you do know that you're going to stand out from other men in a way where maybe most men wouldn't do that and you're doing that you know makes you different cool great uh but like i said just look for the subtlety um in it but that being said i also think that uh creating your own sort of like you know like look and just being around people who are accepting of you or your identity will also help you to vibrate higher it is very very important to make sure you you know put yourself around people that support you and it's on a higher vibrational frequency like people who are vibrating low god bless and pray for them but baby do not surround yourself around with them i had to dump a lot of people you know because i realized like wait a minute like i'm constantly pouring myself out and these people are in competition with me even though i'm trying to like help myself and help them they're trying to get to where i'm at you know and god bless them right like that's why i do this podcast or that's why i have a different products that you know i'm working on different ways to kind of bring awareness but i'm not in competition with anybody and i think that if you create your world and let people know around you who you are are, great you'll start vibrating at a different frequency and i think that you'll pull in the people that you want to pull in um <clears throat> this week i really don't have any particular questions that you know i feel as though were appropriate for the podcast um but if you have a question and you want to know go to askabyguy.com and submit a question or go to askatomboy.com and fill out the little questionnaire and submit a question or if you can't remember, go to AmericanBiGuy.com. It's all going to take you there where you can submit a question and, you know, we'll review it. And maybe it'll be something that I can answer and give you some more direction in case you're curious. Um, we're not going to plague your email with any sort of spam or anything like that. You know, it, you can remain anonymous. Um, just, you know, submit it. And so that way, you know, you guys can tell me where your curiosity is. And maybe I'll be able to share a story or help you down the road of figuring, you know, yourself out a little bit more. Because it is a journey. Um, and it's a fun journey too. Let me tell you right now is that you can be very safe about it. Um, but a lot of people, you know, like I said before, are bisexual and I will do everything I can to guard the bi team and to make sure that I represent us in the most dignified and graceful way because we honestly are the privileged ones. Um, and I'm sick of being demonized and I want people to feel better, you know, to love themselves and to appreciate themselves, you know, no matter who they are, right? And that's just for bisexual people, but for all people and so on that note folks i will let you guys go and please 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 visit askabyguy.com or ask a tomboy or go to americanbyguy.com please submit your questions so we can steer the conversation in the right way hopefully next episode i have a guest for you guys um who will be sharing a little bit more and sharing their journey as a bisexual man okay i'll see you guys next time on the american bi guy with, well, Biology 101 with the American Bad Guy.